We're on a journey to rediscover who we are. You notice that Christmas is still up here at Unity North, yes? We began a journey to our true self with the rebirthing in our consciousness, in our awareness, in our hearts, in our, our attention to the light that we are, recognizing that that light was not in one person 2,000 years ago or in any one person here today, but in all of us. So we brought it back to consciousness and something was birthed within us. And then we got rid of it, the burning bowl, right? Everything and anything and anyone who did not belong in our field any blocks that were in the way. You may feel that there's burning bowl ashes still around. They might still be on your chair. There was a lot of ash in here. But there's evidence of the journey we have been on, but we're on the trifecta, the white stone ceremony, because there must be a completion of the circle in order to be fully who we are designed to be. Yes? So each of us at some point comes to a place in our life when we are no longer content with the container of life that we have created for ourselves. It doesn't mean the container is bad. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that container. But God is an evolving reality in, through, and around, and as each and every one of us. And so it's an ever-expansive environment. We must be in cooperation with that ever-expansive environment because there's always more of you to reveal. There's more of you than you have ever known or ever realized or experienced or expressed that wants to be born. We're going to have that birthing process today. Complete the circle and from the ashes rise from that which has been released to become that which we are. We come to a precipice today where we decide that the time has come to leave old habits and ways of being. On one side of this gateway, you're going to leave who you have been. And I really challenge you to put it right there in those containers. And to go on the other side to become who you are meant to be. I'm asking you to live on the edge today. You know, they say that if you're not living life on the edge, you're taking up way too much space. So I'm asking you to come to the edge and be ready to take a deep dive, to open up fully receptive, humble, honest, and vulnerable to that next chapter of you that is calling you to fall into the arms of who you are meant to be in such a way that this world will never be the same again as a result of your commitment and dedication. In the book of Revelations, we read a scripture and it says this. Let's read this together. To him who overcomes... To him I will give a hidden manna, and to him I will give a white stone, and upon the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Read it one more time with me and put her in there, okay? We're going to make it contemporary together. To her who overcomes, to her I will give of the hidden manna, and to her I will give a white stone, a new name written which no one knows except who, who receives it. So male and female existing at the point of all of us, we've addressed all sides of ourselves. Freedom for every ounce of who we are as a congregation, as individuals. In biblical times, when a prisoner was released from bondage or a slave was released from slavery, they were given two things. The first thing was a white stone that they carried around in their pockets. As a symbol, when somebody questioned if you were free or not, you brought the white stone out and said, look, I am free. Today, you're going to claim a white stone. You're going to have an opportunity to get a white stone as a symbol that will live in your home, in your house, in your pocket, wherever you choose to put it to remind you that you are unencumbered by any human condition, that you are not bound or limited by any human experience whatsoever, but you are free to be the divine essence of who you are. The second thing that that prisoner got upon being released was the opportunity to give themselves a new name. Jesus asked us to pray in his name. He asked us to live in his name. And if you go back to the original Aramaic translation of what he was saying, he says, pray in my nature, not name, my nature. Live your life in my nature. Let me hear what you think. What was the nature of that Christ awareness, the man who had an awareness of the Christ that is in you, what does it look like? What are those divine ideas? Call it out. We got the easy one out of the way. The whole room went, love. Oh, there's a whole bunch more than love. What does it look like? Let's hear it. Courage, strength, wisdom, peace, harmony. There's a thousand divine ideas that are right in the center of who you are. And in order for you to express the fullness of your Buddha nature, your Christ nature, the Atman, the Tao of your being, you're going to call that out today. And it's going to be found in the stone that you claim. 
And you're going to give yourself that new nature, that this new decade before you is contextualized by a new consciousness where you are the very portal through which that divine idea is going to be made manifest. So today, I'm asking you to accept your divinity by claiming that white stone as we break free from any and all limiting ideas that have held you prisoner or captive. And in that stone will be a new name. We've done it through the Christmas season. We've done it through Burning Bowl. It's complete today as you step fully into your magnificence. Now, the thing about freedom is that it is a process. You see, freedom, we used to do white stone around here where you'd come in and you'd get a white stone at the front door. And I examined that. I said, that's a little bit easy. You know, it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, yes? Everything, all the good we could ever desire has been placed in your hands, placed in your life, placed at the center of you. But there must be a co-creative process. We, as expressions of God, must put our hand out to be in partnership with those divine ideas. We can't just sit. I, I wish that I could just sit in meditation and om and just everything would be great. I would, I'm wealthy. I'm rich. I'm, I'm healthy. I, oh, that perfect relationship is in my life. But the reality is we must get busy. You have a body not by accident but by divine appointment. And so you don't get handed a white stone. Freedom is something that must be nurtured by you. We must be proactive about grabbing it, going after freedom, and tending that garden every single moment of our existence through our thoughts, through our words, through our actions. Through everything that we are, we nurture that idea, that divine idea of freedom, and we make a commitment to it. That's my favorite word of 2020. It is commitment. We don't do spiritual hobby here. We do spiritual commitment, spiritual dedication. See, if you do ritual for ritual's sake today, because we ask you to walk through a gateway and get a stone and sit down and do a meditation... That will be useful at one level. But I'm saying let's make a deep commitment that that process of transformation through that portal is a transformation that's going to happen at work, in your family. In every relationship you have will be a transformation because you have brought to the field a new consciousness, a new paradigm, a new idea. You are living as a veritable presence of the Buddha, of the Christ. You're being the change that you want to see in essence. Yes? The gifts of God, the divine ideas are always available, but we must be proactive about claiming them. We must move regularly, internally and externally, and very intentionally. You're being asked to take that action today, a commitment to following through with whatever the universe wants to give birth through you. A commitment to following through, not a one-time deal. This is a life transformation process that we're involved in, to Stop pretending who you have been to be in order to embrace on the other side who you truly are. I like to tell the story of my, my friend Michael Moran. Michael Moran as a teenager got into a lot of trouble as a kid. And he was sitting in a jail cell for the third time as a young teenager. And the third time his mother came and she got a stool and she sat on the other side looking at him through the bars and she only had one thing to say. I don't know who you're pretending to be, but I know who you are. And when you figure it out, I'll be back. She got up and left him there for three days. That was the beginning of his transformation. She put responsibility into his hands to stop pretending. Each of us is in a prison of our own design, our own making. And I'm saying the door is open. And the universe is saying to us, clearly, without reservation or apology, when you figure out who you are, I will be there. And all the manna of heaven will pour down upon that dream and that vision because you have made a commitment. There's a whole bunch of people that think their spiritual practice is sitting in that prison waiting for somebody to unlock it. The door is open. The door was never locked except here in consciousness. So when you figure out who you are, not who you have been pretending to be, something beautiful and magnificent is going to happen. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Say that with me. Be ye transformed. The universe is set up by spiritual law. And it isn't always comfortable, but the universe is responding to your thoughts, to your feelings, and to your actions in direct proportion. What is the thought that you're bringing to life? What are the actions that you're bringing to life? Let them be shifted and changed today in such a way that the universe is going to provide a heck of a lot more. Because 
I'm going to invite you, when you go through these, these gateways in just a moment, to not do it lightly. Ritual for ritual's sake is a waste of time. But ritual as a symbol of a deep inner commitment, a deep follow-through, is the most powerful thing that you can ever do because the universe is rushing in. You take one step towards your good, your good is taking a thousand steps towards you. The presence and the power of God. You take one step towards that, the whole world unfolds and a treasure trove comes at your feet. But the prayer must be a prayer of shift, a prayer of change. We began praying the prayer of Martin Luther King Jr. on the burning bowl ceremony. Thank you, Lorelai, for reminding of us. It seems really appropriate that we pray it again today before we go through these gates. I invite you to put that prayer up there for me. And let's pray this together. Use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use it for a purpose greater than myself. On one side of this portal is me, myself, and I. On the other side of that gateway is us. On one side is me, my narrow, simple, egotistical life. Nothing wrong with that. If you're happy with that container, I'm not bashing it. But on the other side is a world far more expansive. It is a world of we. And all the resources and relationships and opportunities you need will be on the other side of you grabbing that stone. And when you grab that stone, don't just grab any stone. One of them is calling you. One of them has a name in it. One of them has a nature in it. And it may be one that will surprise you. Don't make up your mind what's going to be in that stone. But let it speak to you. The universe is speaking to you through the people in your life. Your life is speaking to you. God is speaking to you through your life. And guess what? God can talk through a rock too. That's funny. It is. God will speak to you through a rock. You know, we have people sitting in here. I just see them who have waited many years to have the house of their dreams. That house was an intention in mind. And you didn't give up and quit four months in when it got difficult. When the money wasn't there, you didn't give up. When it looked like this isn't ever going to happen, they're living. They moved in just two days ago. Was it two days ago? You guys moved into the home of their dreams because they didn't quit. I like to tell a story at this time of year. It's, it's one we've heard many times, the Pool of Bethesda. Supposedly in Israel there's a pool, a small little pool that has healing properties, the angels would come down and they would stir the waters of that pool. And it would then have healing properties. And suddenly the first person to got in to get into that water was healed of all their maladies. There was a guy that was there for 38 years. 38 years of being crippled up, always angry and upset that somebody else always beat him to the water. The angel would stir it and it's like, oh, last one in, last one in. 38 years. Years. That seems like a lot, right? It seems like a burden. That house being built is the same thing as 38 years. 38 just represents as long as it takes to get whole here and here before you get whole here. Jesus comes along, and we like to think of Jesus as this sweet, peaceful, loving guy, right? He also brought a lot of tough love. Here this guy is at the well, and Jesus comes in, and that's the first question he asks him. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? That's a question we're asking each of you today. Do you want to have life be better than it has been? Not bashing what has been, but it can be better. Would you like it to be better? Would you like all the limitations that you put into the burning bowl to be completely and totally gone? Sure. And then what does Jesus say? He doesn't say, oh, you poor guy. You poor victim. It's just not fair. You're crippled up. And everyone's always going to beat you to the... No. What does he say? Take up your mat and walk. Take up your mat and walk. Now, on the outside, from the external egotistical mind, that seems really cruel, doesn't it? How cruel is that? But what do you look beyond the surface of the words? You see an essence, a divine essence, a light, a Christ, a Buddha nature saying, stop defining yourself by the limitations. Some of us are carrying stories around for 30, 40 years. You know who you are. <laughs> I've seen several of you going like this. The reality is we all have a story, a story that has kept us in bondage, kept us in a prison cell. Today is the day to remember who you are, and then the universe will rush in. What if you were to never repeat that story again? What if on one side of this arch is the story you have been telling, 
And through the arches, the commitment that I will never tell that story again, no matter how painful it was, it's never going to be told. It's never going to cross my lips again. It may cross your mind, certainly. It's not an instantaneous healing. It is a process. But you can commit to that process by saying, I will never tell that story again, and my house will be built. My dream will be realized. Now, that's really, really important. But at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus is saying, Stop defining yourself by your brokenness, but by the healthy, vibrant, abundant, and powerful being of light that you are. No matter what anybody tells you, no matter what any religion tells you about being broken or stained, that's the biggest lie ever told on the planet. You are not broken or stained. You're just asleep. You're in a prison cell by your own design because you accepted a limited idea about yourself. No more. Leave that on this side of the arch and then go grab that stone and said, I am more. I am more than I ever thought I could be in God's light, in God's eyes, in God's ears, in God's heart. I am the veritable presence of the Christ. That's what needs to, all right. That's what needs to happen today. My favorite line of scripture, bar none, is the story of the prodigal son. You're being asked, you're going to get up here in a minute, and it may look a little like Atlanta traffic in a moment. <laughs> I hope my system works. <laughs> but the reality is, the prodigal son, a Jew, a Jewish man, is with the lowest of low. He's hanging out with the pigs. Oh, that is the lowest of the low for a Jew. And he's in the, in the mud and the muck, and he's eating pig slop. A lot of us, in one form or another, are eating pig slop. We're accepting a limited idea in the relationships that that are kept us captive, in the situations that have kept us anchored, in the situations that will never let our house be built, ever. And in that line, the scripture says, he came to himself. Another version of, I don't know who you're pretending to be, but I know who you are. And when you get it, oh, oh my gosh, I forgot who I was. Forgetting is no more. It's a commitment to staying conscious to the light, not just in the ones you like, but in everybody. Not just the good days in your life, but even the bad days. You come to yourself and instantaneously, the father says, the, the, the infinite presence, the mother, the, whatever you want to call it, says, I've been here the whole time. And surely you were asleep. That's all that's happening here today. Not fixing a brokenness, but just waking up. I could have had a V8. I'm asking you to get rid of any story that has a victim, a villain, and a hero in it. Any story that you're telling that has a victim, a villain, and a hero is an anchor, and it is keeping you trapped and in prison. Dump it. Dump it however you need to dump it, and then go through that portal. Now, I know that can be really scary, because there are some people that absolutely, oops, I got a gate right here. I know who I am here. I clearly know who I am here. And if I go through here and I grab this, I have no idea who I am. Yes! Isn't that amazing? Because God knows who you are. Love knows who you are. Life knows who you are. And then pick the one. This one picked me today. Hold it proudly because a new nature is in that stone. Don't go through that portal with a preconceived notion of who it, what is going to happen or what's going to be birthed. Take it back to your seat. And then sit with it. And Abraham's going to lead you in a powerful meditation. You see, the fear, there's fear here. No way around it. Fear is your partner, not your enemy. Fear is going to keep you awake. Fear is going to keep you conscious. Fear is part of the human journey. It's not an accident that you have it. There's a divine idea in fear. Let it be at 49%, not 51%, plain and simple. Let that fear be at 49, 48, or maybe a little bit less, but never let it go over 50 because fear will keep you in prison. So you're going to have a clear vision when you walk through and get this stone of, I need to make that call. I need to take that step. I need to have that conversation. Or I need to jump off the cliff and take that risk because something beautiful is finally happening. We're going to begin this process now with going into a song and into our ritual where we'll have a lot of singing. Before we get into the song so I don't disrupt the flow, Here's my plan for traffic management. <laughs> the only way you get to any of these is to come up the middle aisle. I want three rows here of people. 
you'll go to the appropriate one, but there'll be three rows here. You're going to be released, starting with the balcony. You guys get to go first this year instead of waiting a long time. So, and so what I'm going to do is during the song, I'm going to ask you to make your way down to the floor because we're not going to wait too long for you. Three rows. When you go through an arch, you will make your way back to the walls. Go as close to the wall as you can to come around the back and then come up these side aisles to get back into your seat. We're going to do this mindfully. This is a meditation. So don't just jump up because we'll have Atlanta traffic if that happens. Jim is in the back of the room. The ushers are going to release from the back forward so that we don't get bum bundled up. You know, life can get messy. Do you know that? You ever notice that, that life can get messy? But life that's messy, that is managed with a consciousness of freedom, everything works in divine order. Let's prove it, folks. Yes? Sonia Osillo, who is the creator of the mandala that you heard about. I'm going to invite Sonia to come up. Where is she? We have drummers. This is a symbol of freedom. This is a symbol of freedom. She's invited several people to join her in drumming. I invite you to let a heartbeat. She's going to introduce you to a heartbeat. Let your heartbeat and her heartbeat be one. Let the heartbeat of everything that happens in this room be one in such a way that when you walk through the portal to claim your truth, you're not doing it alone. You're taking an army of community and family with you that says, we're going to support you. We're going to hold you accountable. One heartbeat is beating here today. Don't do this lightly. Sonia. All yours. I want to invite you to be part of this song. And the way that you will do is tap into your heart. And what it's meaning is that you are opening, you are receiving, you are giving. And that's the beat. 